Hey guys, my name is Mannequin. Welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro. So, um, a couple news updates. First of all, I'm done with finals, but um, bad news is I actually have not quite sorted out my living situation over the summer yet. So, um, it may take me a while to get back into releasing videos on a uh, more often schedule. So, uh, for now, yes, I am going to continue doing the ones on Saturday and Wednesday at least. Um, but uh, I, I might be able to do them more often depending on where I end up and how things turn out. And uh, one other thing, uh, my the, the vocals that I'm waiting for are going to take a little bit longer than I was initially anticipating. And um, so we're going to have to hold out a little bit longer and do some other videos. And that means that if you have any suggestions or ideas or things you want me, you'd like me to cover, please, please tell me because um, not many people tell me various things they'd like me to cover. Um, so like if there's anything that you'd like to know more about in Logic Pro, uh, just feel free to ask. Um, worst case scenario, I say uh, maybe, but probably not now. So um, so really, it won't hurt to ask. Uh, okay, so today I want to talk about how to um, basically stack synthesizers and get like um, each of these is one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, so we have two stacks here. There are two completely different styles of uh, electronic music. And um, I am going to put this available for download because I kind of want you guys to go through and listen to this and, um, you know, check through it yourself because I'm not going to go through everything I did here just because that would be really time consuming. I'm just going to kind of break down the whole concept of, um, of making a you know, stacked synthesizer sound. So uh, I'm going to play back both of these and um, and then kind of, you know, uh, you'll see that it sounds like one synthesizer in the end. And then the other one. So there's nothing all too, you know, astounding about them, but they it kind of sounds like one synthesizer for each. Um, it sounds very unified, and it doesn't sound like I'm actually doing like three different synthesizers on top of each other. But in reality, as I'll show you, I am. So um, the, the first thing you got to do is when you're stacking a synthesizer is you decide what you want your body to be. In this case, it's this one. And you could check out what I did with this one when you open up the project file, but I've got ES2, um, just did a whole bunch of really weird stuff, did ring mod, um, did some distortion on it, uh, just some overdrive, and then I did some other um, just not too complex routing. Uh, I did start out from the uh, analog saw initialized, uh, in case you're wondering, um, but I'm not gonna show you the entire process there. Thing is, I had a sound, And I wanted to make it sound more interesting. Now you'll notice that I low pass or I um, I high passed uh, low cut, whatever you want to call it. Um, the end here. Normally, if I was just doing one synthesizer, I wouldn't have done that because it gives it more body. But I knew I was going to stack things because that's what the video is for. Um, so I decided I uh, cut that. Now um, the next one I have here is the same thing as this one by way of notes, except for I dropped it in an octave. You can see down here, C3, and then this one is C2. So, um, and this one sounds like. So I basically just got the original one, dropped it down an octave. Um, I filtered off some of the high end using this here. Um, I think I, yeah, I made sure that it was unmapped from the envelope, so it just always stay at that position. And, um, then I just did some different EQs here, gave it a little bit of a bass boost, cut around here, which I'll talk about in a second, and then I also uh, cut out some of the residual high end. There wasn't that much, but I wanted to kind of soften it out. Um, and then the third and final part, which is this. It's really thin and it's kind of annoying sounding, but it actually adds a lot of character to it. Once again, um, it was based off of this one, and then I just tweaked things up all over the place and um, did some pretty weird stuff, but um, in the end, that's this is the sound I got. I did actually do, uh, actually this, I think I opened the wrong one. Here we go, this is the one, yeah. 
Okay, I did open the wrong one. This is the right, the right one here. I did some distortion to it um, and some drive, and then I put the uh, band pass here, and then I did some modulation to the pitch, and uh, or uh, I put the map the pitch to an envelope, which is just this one, so it's kind of fast. And then same thing with the cutoff, and then I added a lot of resonance, so that's where you get the little... I'll show you. So that's kind of what that's doing. And um, so, all together, once again, they sound like this. Now, I'm going to pull them out one by one, and you can kind of hear what it sounds like with that. So first, I'll pull out the main one, and that'll be the most obvious one. So it just lo loses everything it stands for. Actually, I'm going to put this on a loop here to make things easier. Okay. And then if I cut out the high end... It loses a lot of the upper end character. It's just kind of like this heavy ringing thing. It doesn't actually sound like a lead anymore. So that this gives it a lot of the high end character, even though by itself it sounds freaking annoying. Together it actually sounds pretty good. Now if that amount is bothering you, just pull this down a bit. And it becomes less characteristic, but it still adds to it. So that's pretty cool there. And um, so once again, and then I'll pull out this one here. And that's just basically low end. Um, the reason I didn't use a sub for this is because I wanted it to sound rough and grungy. And that's kind of, that's the sound I ended up getting. Um, now, if I were to, actually, this is actually more of a mid bass. Um, so if I pull up the EQ here, you'll kind of see, yeah, there we go. Analyzer, it's probably gonna be mostly around here. If the analyzer turns on. Okay, so turn on high resolution. So um, yeah, it's it's kind of for the most part it's around here. There is obviously some of the low end here, but that's just because I partially just because I boosted it. So um, what I could do is I could actually cut off the lowest part here and then actually put a sub there, but I don't want to bother with that right now. Um, so. So the, th the three of these, we kind of have the mids, the lows, and the highs. You don't always have to do that, which I'll show you in this one. Um, but each one has its own purpose. This one kind of gives it um, a heavy sort of uh, low end that's, that's grungy. This one gives it all the main body, and this one gives it kind of like an upper end character. So um, each one plays its own role in making this lead. So I this is something that's really easy to um, to do and um, create for Electro House. Um, just because Electro House, the, the drops and the leads are very often known for doing this where you're stacking synthesizers. But one of the things you don't um, realize as often is um, how many layers there are in simple sounds from, uh, from like, um, uh, ambient and uh, what's the word? I'm, uh, electronica. Um, how how many layers you have to get into one sound for those? So this one we have a electric piano, um, an EXS, and um, I have also a sculpture on here, which is actually this is the default preset that I just. I uh, don't think I really tweaked anything on it actually. Um, I think I just uh, added a um, low pass filter there, and uh, so once again, this is what this one sounds like. Now, as is kind of possibly obvious, the the high end is just this nice electric piano here that I'm going. And then I have these two, which are kind of in the same area. This one is an organ. And this one is some sort of belly sound almost. And um, see, the thing is with these two is they're almost in the same area, but it changes the whole character of it when you uh, when you have both of them. So it almost sounds like this wavy, um, I don't know, almost icy sound. Whereas by itself, this one is just it kind of just sounds like a cool, a cool as in cold sounding organ, and um, this one sounds just kind of like. 
uh, a bell that's been low pass, which is exactly what it is. So, but when you put them together, you 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 get this very wavy sort of atmospheric sound. That's that's it's very nice. So uh, this is the this is a case where you have two things that are in the same area, and um, it's it's very hard to do with Electro House leads to do this. Um, just because there's so much conflict you get because it's a lot more active But since these ones are smoother They tend to shape the character instead of necessarily add a particular part to it So um, so that's what I did with these two and then obviously this one just kind of gives it a little bit of uh, a punch brightness and kind of um, Sort of I don't know happy sound almost And I'm going to show you with this one what happens when I take out each of these. So this kind of gives it like almost a sort of wavy feel. And how about this one? This one is where a lot of the space comes in. And um, this one's just got a lot of space because the release is really long so so it kind of just naturally has a lot of space so this is two completely different styles uh, obviously they're both electronic music because that's what this channel is for but um, but you see you got like this and then you got that and it's both using two different techniques to um, to you know do synth stacking and synth layering so uh, this one uses a technique where you kind of cut the uh, cut the instrument into uh, different parts and you have different synthesizers to be those different parts. So we have like the uh, the body for this one, which is like the main sound. And then we have the low end, which is a, a different sound. And then we have the high end, which gives it a lot of character and uniqueness. And um, so that's just all stacked together. They get that sound where this one, on the other hand, like I was saying, it's got this one kind of uh, is the high end, which we have found. But it also kind of gives it a little bit of, you know, a uh, different vibe to it almost. Because this one sounds like very smooth and flowing. But when you add the electric piano, it just kind of gives it a little bit more of I don't, a, sort, a sort of happy vibe, like I said. And then, um, and then obviously these two were the ones where you, instead of cutting it into two, two different spots, you get two different sounds that have different characteristics. And then when you blend them together, you kind of get a mesh of the two things as, as long as you're EQing them right. Uh, this one I EQ'd, um, I found the part that really kind of stood out. So let me show you here what I did with EQ before I end this. But if I, um... okay, so this is no EQ. So you could tell that's where most of the body is. It sounds really thin if I pull that out. And then obviously I don't want this to take up a lot of low end because I don't like the low end sound. It kind of sounds like. If you kind of hear it. And then when I take it out, it's just all smooth. And then I just cut out the high end just so I wouldn't have anything residual there. You don't really need to do this. This actually doesn't do much at all. Um, but I just kind of put that there. And then this one, it was just a case of, um, if I take off the EQ here, it's really sharp, which, then it just dominates the entire thing, which is not what I wanted. I wanted the classic electric piano to be that main part there. And then the electric piano was just a case of, um, I wanted to make it bright. So I boosted up there, cut all the, m most of the uh, mids and lows, and then just cut a little bit of the high end because otherwise we get like this weird artifacting sound in the high end. Um, so it doesn't really affect the actual tone of it. It's more of just getting rid of this artifact that we have. Um, you, you can listen closely when you've got it on your system um, as to what that does. But um, anyway, so and then I added some distortion to kind of bring up the volume and also give it some harmonics. So, and then obviously I have the delay because without it, it sounds terrible. 
So um, I, I, I'm not going to go through how Sculpture works because, quite honestly, Sculpture is probably the most difficult synthesizer in, um, in Logic just because um, a lot of the stuff is almost unpredictable um, because the way the whole synthesis works here. Sculpture is um, taking the concept of like digitally creating a instrument, not like a synthesizer, but an actual instrument. So that's what sculpture revolves around. And um, I don't know how to use it well, but you could get some very, very unique sounds. I suggest you go through some of the presets and just kind of listen to that if you're looking for something unique. And um, and then uh, obviously EXS is just a sampler. So I'm not gonna bother going through that one. You can see I used cheap organ there and then all I basically did was cut out the high end. Um, I don't know if I'm messed with the cutoff or anything. But uh, yeah, and then obviously electric piano is electric piano and all I did was tweak a couple of things there. So there's not much to talk about. And these ones I did way too much to where I could actually explain everything I did here. So, uh, so that's kind of why I'm putting the project up here. It's an opportunity for you to, because uh, really uh, when it comes to layering synths, it's, it's all about, um, you know, it's very, very subjective. Not so much I could tell you do this, this, and this, and you'll get a very nice layered synth. Um, it's it's more about learning how to layer and um, the way you do that is by just kind of trial and error and in this case I'm giving you something where I've kind of showed you what it looks like when you do it right so um, so th that is you know as right as my stuff can be that's not entirely you know awesome but it works for some things so um, so anyway yeah I basically you know just just try it try layering some things next time you need more high end for a particular synthesizer or something perhaps instead of just boosting the high end with eq try to create another synthesizer that's bright but has slightly different characteristics and then kind of put it in at a really low volume and um, slowly bring it in until it's just at the point where it adds some high end but it's not like taking over the other sound so um, yeah, something to try and see how that works see how that changes your production style because it's one thing that once you start doing that it really, really, really changes the results of your music because, you know, if you thought, oh, I want an electric piano, so I'll put an electric piano. Sounds very spacious, sounds very nice, but what if you put these things that are almost like a pad underneath of it? Then it really adds a lot of depth and space to it. So, uh, so it can really revolutionize your uh, your production if you haven't if you mostly just do one synthesizer per you know note sequence, uh, like for your melody or your lead or your um, or your chord progression or something. You only use one synthesizer usually, and then you have like you know a melody, a lead, and then a and then a chord progression, and then a bass, and you just have all those make up each part of the track then you know trying this this will definitely add more spice to your projects and stuff like that so anyway thank you so much for watching if you have any suggestions comments or anything like that throw them in the comments down below otherwise if you like this video like it and subscribe if you haven't already because i've got some uh i've got more videos like this and i'll be coming out with more stuff if uh, <laughs> if i figure out some things to do here but uh anyway thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video